Well, February was, what was February? February is honestly one of the hardest months I've had in a long time. And if you saw my TBR video for February, you know that I was kind of planning my books around the fact that I was scheduled to have some infusions for my autoimmune condition. And while I was able to get the first infusion, things, things did not go as predicted and they kind of went downhill fast and it just kind of became a, a bit of a crap show. And so February just did not go as expected, but I did still read some books and I really liked the books I read. I just didn't read as much as I would like to have read. But here, regardless, let's get into this wrap up video and I can chat more about the books I read in February. So hi, my name is Angie, welcome to the channel, welcome back all the things. So like I said, we are gonna be chatting about my February reading. Now my February reading, like I said, was affected by all this medical stuff. I, you know, there's not much to say other than like things kind of went badly. I'm still seeing a lot of doctors. I've been really tired. It's made reading challenging, but I feel like I'm coming out of it. I feel like as March is here, because I'm filming on March 1st, I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful that I will have a better month on so many different fronts for my homeschooling, which I have a homeschool channel, as well as for my reading. And so you guys, let's just chat though about the books I did read because I read four and a half books. And I'll explain the half book in just a second. But honestly, most of them were five stars, which is fantastic, right? So I'm happy with that. Let's briefly talk about the first book because this book I actually did do a bit of a reading vlog with. So this is the book I read for that scavenger hunt video, which I really enjoyed. Let me know down below if you guys watched that or if you enjoyed it. But I picked up The Collected Regrets of Clover by Mickey Brammer and I was so surprised how much I liked this book. Now this is a contemporary book. So first off, I rarely read contemporary. I'm just not as drawn to it. But this one I've heard recommended by a number of different people and it had more depth than I anticipated, which is really probably what put this to a five-star level because the story in and of itself is about this girl who's a death doula. I already forgot her name, Clover. Oh my gosh, it's on the front. Clover is a death doula and she has always been kind of fascinated with death. Like her kindergarten teacher died in front of them. Her parents died when she was young and she was raised by her grandfather. And he was just kind of a, a quiet, steady sort of man, but she had a very unique childhood. And I think in the way she grew up, it forced her to kind of protect herself emotionally, relationally, things like that. And so as she was entering her 20s and 30s, which I think this takes place in her 30s, she's kind of come to the realization that this is as good as life gets. I'm gonna kind of be alone with my cats or dogs. I can't remember what she had. I'm gonna be alone. And that's just as much as I can hope for. And obviously the story takes her from there. The story is about her kind of coming out of her shell. It's about her learning how to take risks. Her learning, first off, to take some, fail at them a bit, do them badly, but be able to re-engage with those relationships and keep moving even though it's awkward and not perfect and messy, really. Life is just messy. And I really liked that. I liked seeing this introverted character battle the fact that she would rather be alone and by herself and to see that relationships are still worth it even if she kind of innately would prefer her own company and to see how that played out and just deepened who she was as a person and all of these things. So, sorry, I feel like I just said all the things I said in that vlog. I feel like the underlying messaging is really what, what got to me with this book. The next thing I read, I read for my book challenge, my reading challenge on Discord. I always have it linked down below. The prompt was to read a book you bought used, but for 2024, I've also been adding a buddy read to see if anybody wants to read the books with me because that's just fun. And so I'll link my announcement video for that in case you wanna see what other books we're reading for the year. But we read this book as a buddy read for February. This book being The Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty. I know this is not a new book and I know people have been reading it for ages. 2019, so I mean it's not a terribly old book either, but I guess five years old. But this is the second book in the David Bad series, the first one being The City of Brass, which a lot more people talk about. Now. Obviously I can't tell you exactly what's going on in this book because I don't want to spoil the first book, but the series as a whole is about this girl named Nari. Now Nari lives in like historical ancient Cairo and she is orphaned and she's a bit of a con artist and then she accidentally summons a djinn warrior 
and <laughs> the plot goes from there and it becomes apparent that she actually is a bit gifted or magical or something is going on with her and so this djinn takes her to the city of brass which is kind of the city of magic that's protected from the human world and in that first book she just it gets immersed into that culture into the politics into the royal family or the ruling family i guess should be said and you get to learn all about these different factions of jinn as well as their backstory and all of these things and in the meantime you fall in love with the characters because i think that is probably what i love about this series is the characters it's not just the character of nari although i really do appreciate her i feel like female characters in fantasy books can sometimes rub me the wrong way especially if they're really young or have some of those tropes of like oh i didn't know i was beautiful or whatever it is but I feel like her character is a little bit more relatable. Like she's tossed into this world that she knows nothing about. And she struggles in a lot of ways. She struggles against people's expectations for her. She struggles against her own expectations for herself and things like that. And then you also get to know Dara, the Jinn warrior that she summoned and their relationship, as well as one of the sons of the ruling family. Ah, it's just so good. And you get more of them in this book, most of them. Mostly. I won't say any more than that, but I have found this series to be very enjoyable and we are actually buddy reading the third book together on that Discord channel and we're going to be doing that in April. So if you're at all interested in joining us, I know it's a big heavy lift to read two big fantasy books ahead of time, but in case you're on the third one and you just want to finish out the series, please come join us because it's been really fun. It's been really fun to discuss this with people. A lot of people haven't really read a lot of fantasy and have been enjoying this series. So I just love it. It's been really, really fun. And if I didn't mention that, that was also a five-star book. So Clover, five-star. The Kingdom of Copper, five-star. Let me just grab the other five-star book that I read in February. Now, February, obviously, it's Valentine's Day month and all this. I don't read a lot of romance purposely because I feel like I need more than just a romantic plot in a book. I do enjoy romance in my fantasy. I enjoy romance in some of my historical fiction. I do enjoy romance when it's not the main plot. So I always hesitate when I pick up romance books, but I picked up Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. Now I read part of your world last year when I wasn't really talking too much about what I was reading, maybe last summer, and I loved it. I really was kind of drawn into the characters. I think for me, with romance, I have to like the characters. I have to believe that the characters are kind of, would be real people. Like I could be their friends in real life and they're not just complete idiots who don't know how to communicate really, because that is a lot of my problems with romance is it's like, if you would just talk to each other, if you would talk to each other, you would figure this out and then we wouldn't have a book. But I did not feel that way with anything I have read by Abby Jimenez yet. This one being about a girl named Brianna, who is the best friend of the character in that first one. I think Alex is her name, maybe, in Part of Your World. And these are companion books, so they're not really a series by any means, but they're kind of linked. And you see some of those characters from the first book in this book, which I always... I always enjoy. And so Brianna is still in the big city. She's a ER doctor. And then there's this new ER doctor that moves into the hospital and she doesn't like him. And that's kind of how the book starts out. And then they start to get to know each other. And there's this like bit of a fake dating trope, which I can get behind. I really don't mind that. It's fun as long as it's not overused and as long as it makes sense and it doesn't get in the way of communication. I really do like it. And I liked the way that that was played out in this book. And I really enjoyed Jacob is his name. I feel like he was a really relatable character because he was an introvert. He struggled a bit with anxiety, but yet he had all these tools in the way that he handled it. He was very self-aware for, you know, a book character, but I just, I liked how his character was written. I'm not sure if I even explained this book very well, but I really liked it. And by the end, I definitely had tears. I definitely was rooting for the characters and I knew it was going to end happily because I feel like Maybe not all romance books do, but I feel like most do. And so I knew it was, but I was just like still very invested. So that's my thoughts on this. So those three books were five stars. So I have one more book that I did just finish. What I don't know is if this was just a problem of the time I read it, right? Like I said, 
I had a heck of a month. I've been kind of in and out of doctors. I've been trying to figure things out, what happened, all these things. So I read these three books in like the first 12 days of the month. And then I read this one in the rest of the month. I finished it yesterday on the 29th. And so I don't know why. I enjoyed it. There was a lot of things I enjoyed about this book. So this is No One Can Know by Kate Alice Marshall. I did end up giving it three stars. A three and a half maybe, I'm not quite sure. It, especially when it comes to thrillers, there's some things that I just really detest about thrillers. And those tropes were not in here. There was no real psychological messed up characters. <laughs> maybe a little bit, but not, not so much that it overtook the story, which I cannot stand in thriller books. This instead was about three sisters one of which we're following is more, I'd say, the main character, although you read from all three perspectives throughout this book, but the main character of Emma, and she is married and expecting a baby. Her husband just loses his job. They're kind of down on their luck, and the only thing they can do is really move back to their old family home. The only catch is that this is the home that their parents were murdered in, and none of the sisters have stepped foot in the house since then, although they still own it. And so since they have really nowhere else to go, they're down on their luck. Her and her husband move back into this house. But there are a lot of questions from the past and the town still remembers it. So there's a lot of judgment and things like that towards our main character. And she also hasn't necessarily been the most honest with her husband because she just wants to leave the past in the past. But obviously the past is kind of resurrecting itself and you're figuring things out you're figuring out what happened. There was a little bit that I predicted at the end. It wasn't totally what I predicted, but that was fun. I enjoyed guessing a little bit of what was gonna happen, but I did enjoy the sisters, even though they were kind of dysfunctional in their relationships, but there was like this hopeful sisterness about them and what they endured and different things like that. So that was enjoyable to me, but I wouldn't say it was like, the most amazing plot twist or I was the most attached to the characters but I'm learning that I just need to let go of the expectation of being attached to my characters in thriller books that's unrealistic that's unrealistic even though I'm a character driven reader when I pick up thrillers I have to go in knowing that it's more for the plot than the characters it's just different than I normally read but anyway I would say three three and a half stars for that one and then the last book so I did say I read four and a half books and the reason is, is because I am currently still reading The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Mass. Now, I wouldn't usually include a book I haven't finished in a wrap-up, but the thing about this book is it's five novellas, and I've read three of the five. And so I have kind of finished out three stories. So I can talk about the first three novellas, and then I'm sure I will finish out the next two. So these novellas are set kind of around the same time as that first book in the Throne of Glass series. And actually it would be better to say they're more set before that book starts. But I think that actually helped me set the stage for reading this book because I have read the first three books in the Throne of Glass series. I've read Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, and Heir of Fire. And so there's so many opinions. There's so many opinions as to when you should read this book, this set of novellas. Some people say just read it at the beginning. I actually would disagree with that. I feel like I got more out of these stories having a bit more of an understanding of our main character, Selena. And since I knew a bit more about her, it helped to read some of her backstory. But I guess you could do that. I feel like it helped me being after the third. I've heard kind of you really need some of these stories or information going into the fourth book. So as long as you read it before the fourth book, you're probably fine. Some people are like, read it after the second, some after the third. I just read it after the third. And I've enjoyed them. There's actually a number of stories. So I read one where it was about her and the pirate lord, where she went to the pirate isles for her boss, which she is an assassin in this world and so her boss is like the head assassin guy and he sent her out on a mission with this other character named Sam which you know Sam in a sense just because of the first book and her referring to her relationship with Sam in the past. I haven't got to more about Sam but that first one and I think the last two novellas will kind of clear up some of his storyline which I'm really actually very curious about that and I hope those answer my questions. But the first one about the pirates, her and Sam were sent to the Pirate Isles or whatever it was called, and they had a job, things happened. There's some repercussions for those things. Those repercussions are a bit in the second and third 
novella as well. In this case, she's being sent to the desert to do some training or whatever with this group of assassins in the desert. Now, why I would fall in the camp of don't read this first is because these novellas kind of span a very large geographical locations. There's lots going on. The world is expansive. That's a good way to say it. It's a big world. And I feel like I probably would have gotten a lot more lost if I didn't have some kind of other events to tie some of these locations to other events that have happened in the first three books of the series. And so in like the second story, she meets a healer lady in the port city before she gets on the boat to go to the desert in the group of assassins. So I enjoyed all three stories. I am curious though. I'm curious if those characters from those stories are going to pop back up or if even they've been mentioned in the first three books and I just didn't realize who they were or that they had any kind of significance to her as a character. And I'm not sure. It almost makes me kind of want to reread some of those first three before I jump into the fourth. But obviously I'm not in a big hurry to read through this series. I'm enjoying it, but it, I feel like I pick up a book every four or so months and just keep trucking my way through the series. But I really did like this and I'm hoping good things for these last two novellas. So you guys, that's my half book. Obviously I don't have a rating for my half book yet, but so far so good. I feel like they've been worthwhile short stories and sometimes a short story is just really nice. Like especially when I'm tired and things are going on, to be able to read just like a little story and then complete it feels so much better than say taking 20 days to read a 300 page thriller book. So anyway, you guys, that's my February. Like I said, I'm, I'm glad it's over, honestly. I feel like March is gonna be better for books, for health, for homeschooling, all things, really. I'm hoping March is better, but I would love to know your thoughts on any of these books. If you have read them, what your thoughts are, if you have any books that you would recommend to me. I have big plans, not enough time to read all my big plans, but that's okay. The planning is half the fun for me in my reading world. So I hope you all are doing well and that's what I have. So give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you guys in the next book video. All right guys, take care.